When I got my saw about the middle of the year last year, I decided to do something I hadn't allowed myself to do with my other saw. Invest in high quality blades. Blades aren't cheap and cheap blades rarely get us the results that we desire. What I wanna to do today is show you guys the blades I've been using and which ones I can recommend for which tasks. Now, to be fair, nobody needs this many blades. I've worked in production shops where we didn't have this many blades. I do think that everyone should own a good combination blade or an all-purpose blade. And we'll go into terms here in just a minute. I also think that you could get two complementary blades. So if you find that you rip a lot of material all the time, step outside that combination blade and get a rip blade. Step outside of that and get a blade that's really, really good at cutting plywood if you work with plywood a lot and save that combination blade for some of your other tasks. Now we'll get into all this in just a second. What I wanna do is I wanna go over some blade lingo because if you're in the market for buying a blade, there's a lot of acronyms and weird stuff floating around that can be really, really confusing. But to make it worse, Manufacturers just kind of do whatever they want anyways. First term would be blade thickness. This is where we have thin curve or full curve. Thin curve comes in around 330 seconds. Full curve comes in around an eighth inch. Now thin curve will take less material than full curve, but the reality of it is there's only a difference of a 30 seconds of an inch, which is not a huge savings in material. In reality, a lesser quality thin curve blade can also flex and move, creating a wider cut than what the blade actually measures and possibly leaving a less than desirable surface. However, a thin curve blade can be beneficial to those with underpowered saws, especially with hardwoods and dense materials that create a lot of resistance. Then we have tooth count, 24, 40, 50, 72, 80, the list goes on. There's a mind-boggling array of saw blade tooth count and configurations, but in general, less teeth, better for ripping. More teeth, better for cross-cutting. In the 40 to 50 count range is what lies combination and all-purpose blades. These blades are in theory the jack of all trades, but not always the best at any particular job. However, if you're on a tight budget, a high quality combination blade or all-purpose blade can be a much better option for you than having several lower quality blades that have specific tasks. Tooth rake or hook. This is essentially the angle of the tooth in relationship to the center of the blade. Think of it as how far forward the tooth leans. A more positive hook angle results in a more aggressive and in theory, faster cut as the blade pulls the material into it. Teeth with zero or even negative hook angle will be more resistant to cutting, but is a good choice for radial arm saws and sliding miter saws where an aggressive blade is not ideal. A zero to negative hook angle is also beneficial with cutting dowels and aluminum where a positive hook angle can cause a loss of control as the teeth quite literally bite off more than they can chew. FTG or flat top grind. This is typically found on rip blades or specialty joinery blades and leaves a square shaped kerf in non through cuts, sort of like a dado stack. The square shape of the teeth chisel through material going with the grain quickly and easily, but a lower quality blade can oftentimes leave a rough edge. ATB, or alternate top bevel. This is alternating angled teeth that shear through material, slicing through wood grain, and are the most common tooth configuration found on a lot of blades. The angle of the teeth can also be ground extra steep and tall, and is typically referred to as HATB. These blades can produce an even cleaner cut, but can also dull quicker. An HATB blade with a low hook angle can do really well for chip out free cuts in plywood and melamine. ATBR or alternate top bevel with raker. Now this setup is usually found in traditional combination blades and all purpose blades. This combines ATB teeth with an FTG tooth or raker tooth added in. Usually the raker is every fifth tooth on a combination blade and every third blade on an all purpose blade. In theory, this gives you a blade that can cut well in cross cutting and ripping and oftentimes can leave a more desirable finished surface than a dull or lower quality dedicated blade. TCG or triple chip grind. With this type of blade, you'll have one tooth with chamfered corners followed by an FTG tooth or a raker tooth. The chamfered tooth essentially scores the material and the flat tooth takes out the remainder. While these blades can definitely be used to cut wood, they really excel at cutting dense or brittle materials like plastic or non-ferrous metals. Now out of all these blades, which ones do I recommend? Well, Honestly, they've all been pretty good. Some of them a little better than others. Uh, real quick, I know someone's gonna ask me, uh, because we're talking about blades, about my miter saw blade and recommendations for a dado stack. Now, I only have one of each of those things. I'm gonna tell you the ones I have, and then that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, the This is a 12-inch miter saw. 
This is a CMT orange blade. This is like their industrial line. So it is a full curve blade, 72 tooth count, alternating top bevel. Um, it's an excellent, excellent blade. It has 10 degree hook on it, which means it's not super over aggress aggressive, but it, it doesn't baby the material either. So I can get a pretty decent speed through um, some pretty interesting stuff when I throw it in there. As far as my dado stack goes, same thing, CMT orange. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with these types of stacks in my own personal shop. When I got this, I really wanted to make sure though that I had one that wasn't going to give the little dog ears. When you get the inexpensive dado stacks, you will get the little dog ears in the corner. So you have a totally flat bottom uh, rabbit or dado or groove, but then in the corners of it, you get these little tiny um, triangular voids, if you will, which can be really, really, really annoying. That's why I put off buying a dado stack for so long because I didn't want that in my finished products. Uh, so those, that's it, the miter saw blade and the dado stack, that's all I have. For saw blades, remember in the beginning of the video, I told you guys that I think everyone should have an all purpose or general purpose blade or combination blade. Either one of these two will work very well for that. In the full kerf section, I highly, highly recommend this. This is the Freud Industrial. So this isn't the Diablo version. This is the Industrial. It's sort of the next tier up. Um, 50 tooth combination blade. So sets of five teeth, alternating top bevel with the one rake or two thrown in there every fifth tooth. I bought this blade originally, hoping that it would give me a flat bottom on non-through cuts like the number one grind forest. It does not, but it does everything else really, really well. In fact, when I bought this, I was gonna take it back because it didn't do the one thing I was hoping it would do, but because it did everything else so well, I really used this for a couple months without switching the blade out because I didn't really need to anymore. So for a full kerf option, totally recommend this. However, because I know a lot of you guys need to run thin kerf, CMT Orange, this one is a 42 tooth. It is general purpose, so it's alternating top bevel with one raker every third. It's a really good blade. It doesn't do as well on plywood as this one does, but it does cut plywood. You have to kind of come to grips with what it is you're really trying to get out of your tools with most things. If you're cutting up just general plywood, you don't really care as much about the finish or you can tolerate a um, less than perfect finish. You don't mind a little bit of chip out and stuff from those top veneers. This blade's going to do you really well. But for me, especially when I'm working with the Baltic birch and building jigs and stuff, I really want as clean of a finish as I possibly can because this is something that I'm going to put my hands on later and I don't want to sit there and dress it up and break all the edges. This blade doesn't do as well for that. So for that, I have both of these two here for thin curve. This one is a, actually they're both 60 tooth. This one works really well for phenolic ply, for melamine, anything that has sort of that plasticky coating on it, that blade is gonna do really well. In fact, I've circled right here what this blade is for and I primarily use it only for that, uh, just so I don't have to worry about it down the road. Both of these will do really good on plywood. This one, also a 60 tooth, does really well for plywood and cross cuts, leaves a very clean finish. So speaking of cross cuts, these are my two cross cut blades primarily. Um, this one is the Full Curve. This is the Amana uh, Prestige series. This one is a 60 tooth. It is a very good blade when it comes to cross cutting, but of course it's gonna come at a higher price point. And because a lot of people need to run thin curve, again, I'm gonna go back to recommending this one. Again, 60 tooth, fine cutoff is what they call it. As far as ripping goes, these two blades here, 22 tooth thin curve from CMT, this one here, and then the Amana 30 tooth, um, full curve blade. What's interesting about this blade is that it is a TCG. So it has the one tooth that has the bevels knocked off the corners and then the other tooth is a raker tooth. So it's kind of an interesting tooth configuration for a rip blade, but it does work. One thing that I will say when you're looking at ripping materials and you're looking at a glue line rip, your material has to be flat and straight and true as much as you possibly can make it or else this saw blade just can't do its job. I didn't really think about that when I got this blade originally. I guess I was expecting it to be magical and just have perfect 
uh, glue ready joints right off the table saw and it will as long as your stock is prepped right going into the machine which makes total sense i was just sort of a knucklehead and i didn't think about it ahead of time so it's not a fault of the blade itself this blade actually works really well either one of these will however you have to make sure that if you're looking for that glue ready finish right off the saw you make sure that your stock is well prepped before it enters the saw um, as far as my joinery blade, or at least what I call my joinery blade, this is a number one grind. This is a specific grind for the forest wood worker uh, two. This is a 40 tooth, and you guys have seen me use this a lot when we were doing a lot of table saw joinery. This is a single full curve blade that leaves a perfectly square bottom. So you can use this in replace of a dado stack. Obviously you have to make more cuts than a dado stack, but this one will get you a very clean cut. It is not an inexpensive blade, but it is worth every penny. I promise you, I put this off for a long, long time. These can be hard to find. I will leave a link in the description so you guys can find more info about that blade, but when they do have them available, they seem to disappear very quickly. This is the Diablo blade. This is a triple chip, triple chip grind, and the Diablo series is, uh, I think, primarily sold at like the Home Depot and stuff. There's nothing wrong with this blade whatsoever because I use this primarily for plastic and cutting aluminum and stuff like that. And so for that, it works really well. 84 tooth count, yeah, 84 tooth count. So I'm getting a lot of tooth um, in my material on shallow materials. Because if I'm cutting acrylic or aluminum or something like that, I'm probably dealing with really thin material. And so having that high tooth count allows me to actually have teeth engaged throughout the entire cut. So I can recommend this. This actually does really, really well as well, but it's also, that's all I really use it for. Like I said, a good combination or general purpose blade is really the ticket for the majority of the stuff that you do in your shop. But when I need to cut plastic, I have a specific blade for plastic. If I need to cut melamine or phenolic ply, I have a specific blade now that I will go to and I'll know that that blade is going to give me perfect finish results. It's kind of a pain having so many blades in the shop because of money. Blades cost money. But interestingly enough, if you get higher quality blades, they're going to be able to be resharpened more often than the lower quality blades. And if you have an assortment of blades, you're not putting all your wear and tear on the one or two blades you have. So I do think it's beneficial to sort of branch out from those combination blades or all purpose blades and get some blades that are more tailored to specific applications. They'll last you the rest of your life at that point. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully this helped somebody out there. We'll see you in the next video.